In this video I'll describe how to construct the fuselage pod for the Synapse flying wing. The first decision to make is the diameter of your fuselage tube. Here I have three sizes. This is the 2 inch, 2 and a half inch, and 3 inch nominal. And when I say nominal diameter, what I mean is the paper interval on the inside of the fuselage is 2 inches in this one, 2 and a half, and 3. The reason I use that dimension is because it's the paper interval of course so while constructing the tube it makes sense it's also the free and clear space inside the fuselage the outer diameter of the fuselage isn't that descriptive but when you're talking about putting camera equipment and payload measuring batteries and so forth what matters is the inside diameter so this one's two inches it will easily fit two inches this one two and a half and this one three inches my recommendation for the two inch nominal tubular fuselage is for a simple um, FPV setup or just a fun flyer. I fly this with a 4000 milliamp hour battery, a simple board camera, a very simple OSD, but this has a good grip size for throwing and it's easy to make two fuselage tubes out of one piece of Dollar Tree foam board so it's very economical. The two and a half inch size is my go-to size. It's also still easy to grip. It has um, about a 50 percent larger frontal surface area so it does have more drag but it does accommodate a GoPro inside the case just about perfectly so if you're planning on using a GoPro this is a pretty good size and finally the 3 inch is uh, quite large uh, it's still graspable but a little bit clumsy I would probably recommend this only for the largest of payloads or for a version of the Synapse that has landing gear obviously other sizes are possible in any configuration these are all square but a rectangular fuselage or even a triangular might work. The first step in making your Synapse fuselage is to construct the 30 inch long foam board fuselage tube. Please refer to the detailed video for a more intricate discussion of how to build these but in brief first what you'll do is to decide on a fuselage width and trace out the intervals. I've chosen two and a half inches in this example and so the paper is marked and then scored all the way down to the opposite end with the main interval and then half inch intervals in between. The paper is removed at the half inch intervals. Here the paper has been removed at these half inch intervals and I will place it beneath this piece of plywood and bend up first the two center folds and then the outer folds, leaving the paper on in all of these five locations at first. Here's the bending operation under this heavy piece of plywood. Bend it up to 90 degrees, then overfold it all the way, and that will help to fatigue the foam. And then do the outer bend to 90 degrees. Carefully press that down on a flat surface and then over bend that as well. Repeat that on this side and then prior to gluing remove this paper only on the half section. I recommend leaving the paper here for a little additional strength and rigidity. Having pre-bent the four corners of the fuselage tube we'll use another piece of foam board pre-covered with tape with the paper removed from this side glued inside here to join the lower surface of the fuselage tube. The first step in that is to take a piece of foam board, preferably pre-taped, you can use a scrap for this, and some removable tape like this masking tape, and apply that to the outer surface of the area to be joined. Try to be certain that your ends line up perfectly nice and square so that you'll end up with a nice straight tube all the way down. Also, if possible, use a piece of foam board here that is pre-taped so that if you use Gorilla Glue and some of it happens to squeeze through this crack, it'll allow this uh, rigid member to be released after the glue sets. The next step will be to glue this joiner inside here. And so Gorilla Glue will be applied to this joiner or hot glue if you desire, although you'll need to be very quick about it, and then clamp down inside the fuselage tube against a hard surface with a piece of angle aluminum or very rigid wood using, I like to use these squeeze clamps, but C clamps would work as well. 
and here's what that looks like on the end. I've actually added another wider piece of metal here to help distribute some of the force in this slightly wider version of the fuselage tube. To discuss some of the general considerations of the Synapse fuselage pod from the nose back. Uh, now this slope here is designed mostly for accessibility of your electronics here. If this were a straight tubular fuselage, the tray would have to be slid out quite far to be able to access the electronics inside, whereas with this slope it allows you to access all the way back to here, which is back to the receiver. Making it slope too far back um, interferes with the ability to install the wing tie-downs. So this slope here that I've been using is six inches from the very nose to this point. Now the tail taper is great for aerodynamics. It provides a recessed place for your speed controller if you choose to do that. And it also improves the airflow to your propeller, making it quieter and more efficient. You don't want to slope this too far forward either as the center of gravity typically falls right about here on the fuselage. Therefore it's nice to have a flat surface behind the center of gravity so that when this sits on the ground it doesn't tilt back. It's a small point, but usually four inches from here to here is adequate to give a decent aerodynamics and adequate space for your speed controller if that's where you put it. And I've, sw I've tapered it up to one inch here and I've chosen that dimension as I've built up the foam inside this area to accommodate this motor mount. Use your discretion on that. This can be thicker or narrower as needed depending on the motor mount and the motor itself. Here is a piece of two and a half inch tubular fuselage which I've marked to obtain two separate fuselages. So starting here, I've cut off four inches from here to here, tapered up to one inch. So four inches back, one inch down from the top. This is the area that can be built up with extra foam board, gift cards, wood, balsa, whatever you like to provide a nice solid mounting spot for your motor. This dimension here is 12 inches, which will accommodate your wing tie downs and a little bit of fuselage protruding rearward. On this end, I've done exactly the same thing but flipped 180 degrees so that this is 4 inches here, this is down 1 inch, and this is 12 inches. So that allows one, two separate fuselages. Notice that I've traced this line not from the very bottom surface with a straight diagonal line, but rather right up to where the thickness of the foam board is inside. I prefer to make these cuts straight down, squarely through the foam board, squarely through the foam board there, and then slope through there. This will provide a nice flat, clean surface here, 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 and here to finish off as well as when you apply a piece of foam board on the bottom it will engage that little notch right here more smoothly along the bottom. First to make the traversing cuts first, the ones that cross the foam board, and then make the diagonal one second. I like to use a utility knife with just an ordinary but very new and sharp blade and tape a straight edge to it so that that doesn't easily move and then just cut right through it right up to, but not across, the diagonal line right there. Now I'll cut the diagonals. And that should come right apart, leaving a nice square face here and a nice square face here that you can dress up with some thin foam safe CA glue to harden it or you can tape over it. Now I'll just cut off the rear of each of the fuselage tubes. I do not recommend leaving the rear of the Synapse fuselage square as it provides a big dead area of wake behind the fuselage that causes a lot of turbulence, loss of efficiency, and increased noise from the propeller. So tapering this down even a little bit down to about the diameter of the motor is a great idea to improve efficiency a little bit and decrease the noise a little bit. 
Next, I would strongly consider doubling whichever side of the interior of the fuselage wasn't already doubled. Here's the lower inside of this one, which is doubled, so I'm going to put a piece of foam board inside here. And I do recommend at this point peeling off the paper if you're using Gorilla Glue on both sides and gluing foam directly to foam. If you're using hot glue or CA glue, it's not quite as crucial to remove the paper. In this one, I'll be doing the same operation, but it's on the lower inner surface of the plane. Using pre-taped foam board like this will allow your battery tray to slide in and out a little bit easier. So I'm here ready to double these up. Here's the one that goes in the bottom. Paper removed here. The paper removed from the inside there. And then this is a 12 inch piece that will go on the inside of the upper one here. Paper removed from both sides. This is a great time also to consider burying some gift cards between those two layers, like one here where the motor is, just to help stiffen that up. And additionally, one near the front as the wing tie down is going to pass through this area. It can help to bolster up this foam a little bit by putting the gift card there and then the foam board over the top of that and just using Gorilla Glue, a little misting of water or hot glue or whatever you like to uh, affix that inside and make a nice strong platform for both your wing tie down and your motor mount in the rear. Now whereas the paper interval here is two and a half inches, I've actually made this one two and three quarter inches, which is the true inside diameter of this. That will, this will allow the edges to butt up right against the sides and make it just a tiny bit stiffer. That'll fit in there nicely like a glove. I like to build up the motor mount area with alternating plastic gift cards and depapered foam board so that provides a nice, firm, stiff platform to apply the motor mount. It has reasonably good stiffness in all directions, as well as having the edges of the gift cards exposed to accept the thrust of the motor mount against the fuselage. Here's an example where I've interspersed depapered foam board with gift cards, and I like to use the white Gorilla Glue, misted with water of course, all carefully applied like this and then having removed the paper from the inside of the fuselage from the upper surface as well as the sides this would be inserted and clamped in place for 30 minutes to provide a very nice strong but light and inexpensive motor mounting spot 